Hi, folks. Welcome back to the show. I am Matt Logan, your host. I am here with Brad Trahan, Rochester Mayor Hopeful, Rochester, Minnesota, that is. And we're going to discuss a few things, Brad. But first of all, I want to welcome all of our guests for listening, for watching. If you want to go ahead and hammer out a share, hammer out a comment, we appreciate that. But if you're ready to get into this conversation, I'm ready to get into this conversation. So go ahead and strap up that harness because it is time to shake things up. We're going to rattle them around. Let's go. the Matt Logan show. Everybody loves money. Nobody has any of it right now. <laughs> There's a lot of things that, um, man, it's expensive to do just about anything, drive anywhere, buy any food, housing issues. Um, man, it cost me 50 bucks to drive out here from Rochester. I know. Right? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you like a candy bar or something. Yeah, that'll work, but I, I, I've lost 20 pounds, so I don't know if that's a good thing. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, it, we'll figure it out. Yep. Um, I'll just walk you around the, the property. That'll go. wear it off. There you go. The uh, in, in all seriousness, uh, there's a lot of issues. Uh, fiscal responsibility, affordable housing gets in there. Affordable housing is... I mean, that's really an issue for everybody right now. Uh, taxes are going up. Um, we're, uh, people I've talked to, we're in Minnesota, man. It's going to get cold. It's not cold right now, but the energy prices and, and things. Uh, let's talk some money. You know, it's the real deal. When I'm knocking on doors, man, it's nice to be back with you, so thanks for having me back. Um, it is a big concern um, for the citizens, taxpayers of Rochester, when they go to the gas pumps, when they're going to the grocery store, when they see their energy bills. You know, think about that. And, it, and it, as property taxes are going up, what's that doing to our individuals that are on fixed incomes? Uh, that's really putting a real crunch on what they're able to do, and there's a great concern with that. And um it's uh, affordable housing. I, I just have to come out and say this right now. We don't have affordable housing in Rochester. We truly don't. You know, we're building about a thousand unit multiplex uh, apartment buildings uh, per year uh, in Rochester, and there's a need for some of that. But one of the things I would really like to do as mayor is start really focusing on purchasing of homes. You know, Rochester Area Foundations, for example, and First Homes, they just opened up a, a lot that's two lots that used to be one. Where they're putting six homes in there, it's going to hit that price range of two hundred ten to two hundred thirty thousand dollars, eighty percent of the AMI. When people purchase homes, Matt, they vest longer in their community. They're more involved in the community. Um, but right now, fiscal responsibility is so important, and it is a big concern right now with what with, with the neighbors I'm talking to. I've been involved with some. Um, let's just say I've been involved with some things where I, I had to uh, give a stamp of approval or not on some money. And uh, consulting is always a big thing that comes up in these different organizations. And I've had some conversations with people that uh, have been very disappointed with uh, return on investment for consulting in Rochester because they're business owners and they're like, what's going on here? We, we're, you know, we're looking at these, this line of, oh, there's all this money going out to these consultants. What does that even mean? What these consultants aren't even local consultants. It's you know it's it's odd you bring that up because it's so true. I actually asked that question and saying what are we, the first quarter alone? What are we spending on consultants in in the city of Rochester? And the reply I got was well it's kind of vague because sometimes it could be under consulting or sometimes it's listed under professional services. I'd be asking the city administrator if I'm elected, we're going to need one line item just to say consulting. I want to know what that looks like. My judgment, Matt, and this is a guess, but it's anywhere from 1.3 million to 5.8 million the first year. Consulting does have a purpose, but you know who the best consultants are? It's the taxpayers of Rochester, Minnesota. Absolutely. That's the best consultants Absolutely. you can get. And we got we have incredible talent in an incredible community, and it's time that we unleash it, and that also means in the consulting business. And some of my consultant friends are going to be offended by what, what I how I kind of open that. It felt like, <clears throat> excuse me, I meant that consultants aren't important. They are comp important but my point is is the local consultants have to be a priority absolutely because as i talked about yesterday 
I've traveled all over the country and every place is different. You cannot bring in a consultant from New Orleans and they're going to know the community, period. Exactly. And as we've spoke before, local businesses are so important to me. And if we have in this term, if we have local consultants that can bring that same expertise to our community, why won't we tap into that? When you bring in outside consultants, think about that. You're bringing in outside consultants to tell us what we need to do better, but they don't live in our community. They don't walk and talk in our community. They don't experience what we go through during four seasons in our community. We have to really refocus just as much as we have to continue to promote local businesses. Why are we farming some stuff out in Pennsylvania, Minneapolis, St. Paul, California, when we have local business entrepreneurs that can do it right here in Rochester? I'm going to ask that question. But you know what? That's the consulting portions. Again, they do have a purpose. But let's, again, and that's where I talked about previously, the disconnect that we're seeing with our local government and our community. That's a prime example right there. It is a prime example, I think. I I was actually on an airplane um, a few months ago. I believe he was from Texas or Oklahoma. I can't remember which one, but close to the Oklahoma-Texas border. Nonetheless, warmer conditions, right? And he uh, was in Rochester, and he was wondering why we didn't have more outdoor places to eat. You know, this is in the springtime, Mm -hmm. and it's pretty nice out and feels great. and, And I'm like, so apparently you've never been here for six months out of the year. You know, and that's the point. You, if you're not from here, you can't understand those four seasons that you're talking about. How are you going to consult on a business and say, you need more patio space, open up the restaurant and put more, you know, gut it out and, and tear half the building down to put out more patio space? That doesn't make any sense. I think sometimes what our local government forgets about, too, is even our local consultants that we have the, that have the talent, they're networking all over the place. They're not just networking in the Midwest. They're networking in the, through the United States. Through, sure. their, through their business relationships, they can see what goes on in other parts of the country. And then how do you take those ideas and implement it into a town like Rochester, Minnesota? Um, but we've got so many great ideas in the private and public sector, only if we seek them out. And I don't think we've done well enough as a city to seek that out. There's a saying, and I'm going to butcher it really bad, but there's a saying that um, something about how people don't want their um, opinions to be implemented. They just want their opinions to be heard. And I, I know I'm butchering it, Brad, but that's a, that's a really good point, and that's what comes to mind. If you hear somebody out, that's going to actually give you a lot more credibility than what you just don't want to even hear them. You don't have to implement that idea. But hear the idea. It's weird you say that, Matt, because my motto is listen, learn, and lead. Yeah, I'm a firm believer, Matt, that one cannot lead until they listen and learn first. I tell people of Rochester and the people I'm, you know, all the businesses and the neighbors and the taxpayers that I'm going to listen to you, I'm going to learn from you, and I'm going to lead with you. And that has been the number one thing that I'm hearing is people just aren't being heard. You know, again, we talked about earlier that maybe it's not the news they want to receive, but they want to be heard. If they feel they can have input into a matter, everything is fine. But the community of Rochester at all levels is simply not being heard by our local government. That's a fact. It, that, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I don't live in Rochester again, but I know a lot of people. I'm from Rochester, grew up there, uh, live just outside of Rochester, so I do a ton of business in the city. And it is definitely very disconnected in this administration and in, in, in really my lifetime. Um, and I believe that uh, from a federal level, you have to have that Democrat-Republican bend, I suppose, to, you would call it. But when you're leading a city, that has to be very nonpartisan. You cannot have that. Uh, one-size-fits-all kind of mentality. With a budget, does one-size-fit-all? When you're talking about fiscal responsibility, how do you balance those things out between, well, we need to pay consultants for certain things, but where can we cut it and add it into the community? Um, Actually, that park and rec stuff, pools, all these different issues that are coming up, um, let's do a different episode on that. I'm going to make you drive out here again. I would love to do that. I, if I um, could, add but, one. but let's keep talking. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to do a segment on that. Um, first of all, it's important to people to realize, especially you know the community, to know that when it comes to the budget, 
the the city council approves the budget. It's about five hundred nine million dollars right now in Rochester. Two hundred million alone is by Rochester Public Utilities. But where the mayor can have input is just have have those conversations with the council, with the city administrator and staff, and really take a look, saying. Here's our budget. Are we being wise with what we're spending? What's our staffing look like? Wants versus needs. I mean, we really have to take a full analysis of that. I'm concerned, Matt, right now in terms of fiscal responsibility, there's talk from economists of all walks of life that, you know, we could be in a recession or going into one. I want to touch, too, about the um, the partisan factor of that. Uh, you're absolutely right. We have to be nonpartisan in what we're doing. We have to look at, listen to, and learn people, learn from all walks of life. We've had so many great leaders in the past that may have had partisan views leading our community, but they made decisions that were nonpartisan and did what was best for the city of Rochester. And we're in the spirit of losing that compromise to trust and hear all sides. Yeah, I and especially the way the communication has gone um, with, and I'm not. I'm a, I told you this, I'm a solutions-driven person. I want to find solutions. In order to find those solutions, we have to know what questions to ask. And some of the questions that are being asked are, why is this administration currently not listening to the community and certainly not learning from the community, um, and, but just trying to push, push as a, maybe push from behind as a leader your perspective on that, specifically in money, how do you lead a whole community with a $509 million annual budget? Do you lead from the middle of the pack? Do you lead from the front of the pack? Do you try to push them in your direction? Um, what, what does that look like? That's well, a big deal. It's a big deal, and I think when you dive into it, because I'm not going to be your expert in the in the in the budget, but what you really you know, public safety has always got to be a priority when you look at some of that. All, I will say too, when we talk about fiscal responsibility, there's talk now about our tax levy. It was 80, 85 million right now in 2022. There's talk to raise up to 92 million dollars in 2023. You got five entities that really make that tax levy up. But in terms of being the mayor and giving input out, you got to make sure that water, sewer, the public safety is all being taken care of. Uh, really, what it comes down to is I. I truly believe in the years ahead, this council is going to have some tough decisions to make when it comes to its budget. Um, are there going to be cuts? Possibly there could be some cuts. But, you know, at the end of the day, we got to provide essential services to our community. That's going to be important. I just want to add out one other thing, too, as far as my openness, if I'm elected as mayor, is that I've always believed, Matt, that we'll achieve so much more by working together than any one person business or entity could ever do on their own. And when we have that can-do, solutions-based type attitude, good policies made, and that's what I'm going to look to achieve. We really have to take a solid look at this budget and say, what are the must-haves and what are the wants? And we have to, when we take a look at it and put that in priority, I think we'll come to good policy. But we got to be very conscious. I'm really concerned here what's going on in the rest of this year and into next year. That's a good point, and, and that actually, uh, certainly there's things that from a non-local perspective that's important that you have to, like I mentioned, you have to kind of have that um, fight back and forth, so to speak, but when you're talking about running a city, uh, that doesn't fly. No, it Period. doesn't. No, no, it really and doesn't. I like to hear that. No, it's uh, you know, you you know, when when you get something that's five hundred ten million dollars and that, that's running this community, you really have to dive into it and see what are the essentials that we have to take care of. And um, you know, we got to be really responsible because at the end of the day, it's not the staff's money, it's not the mayor's money, it's the taxpayers' money, and that's what I want to be conscious of. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's definitely been lost in the last few years right. in a lot of areas. You're so. absolutely right. And that's a, we have to get refocused on that. So on your way out today, I'm going to show you my park and then tomorrow we'll uh, talk about parks. I look forward to it. Thanks for having me back. Absolutely. All right. Take care, Matt.